Pat the Nest Punk and Ian. You're next. Yeah, I just had to get into character here. As we will be discussing Ian Ferguson along with his with his old buddy Pat the NES Punk here. 50 reasons why Pat the NES Punk and Ian are assholes. Let's begin. Number one. Oh yeah, here's a here's one of the personal favorites of mine. <laughs> they cried that Diablo fans were entitled babies for being unhappy with a shitty mobile game that was only created to scam people out of money. Yeah, you gotta love the mentality of Pat and Ian here who think that gamers are entitled babies for expecting a game in a series not to suck and to be a decent product and to not rip them off. Yeah, that's that's completely entitled. Yeah, give me a fucking break. Really? Yeah, they were screaming at they're practically screaming at their fans. You entitled fucks! You entitled little bitches. Well it's Ian, so it's like you you entitled little fucks! You entitled little bitches. People are not entitled for that. And you're as telling them that they're acting like babies because they don't wanna play this game, okay, that this uh yeah, that these this company decided to make. You're all you two are a bunch of corporate apologists. Okay, you do you are, you hate gamers. That's all that is. You know, if if you don't if you don't want the the game that they that they made, that shut the fuck up. They shut the fuck up. And then yeah, they're both like they literally basically they I think they actually did quote unquote say in their video like they told their audience to fuck off, which is just hilarious for so many reasons that we'll get into later, but we had to start off with that one. Number 2. Oh yeah. They later recollect this event in a Tops Regrets video. They bring up the Immortal, the Diablo Immortal situation. And they double down. They they said they didn't, they went out of their way to bring it up in a Regrets video to say that they didn't regret saying this to their own audience, to their fans. To disrespecting their fans and telling them they're a bunch of entitled little babies and to stop complaining as they're fucking complaining about people complaining about Diablo Immortal. Yeah, I gotta love this. Stop complaining! Just stop complaining! They brought this, I'm sure, yeah, look up their top regrets video. They mentioned this and they double down and they say, oh no, we weren't wrong about that. We stand by that just as much, like even more. You guys are a bunch of idiots, they said. Oh my God. Number three, Pat lived slash lives in a disgusting hoarder filthy duplex for over a decade. I think he might have moved out of this place recently, but yeah, that video I showed you guys with his disgusting, disgusting duplex. That literally looked like an episode of Hoarders. Like, even down to the music, it had horror music in the background. There was a seven-part series where Pat goes through his duplex that you, you couldn't even walk a lap in. That you can't even see the floor. It's like one of these places, like, you're literally, like, walking like this. Because you, you can't, you never know when you're going to step on something. Like, you just, every single move, you're just trudging through this place. I mean, knocking shit over. He's probably screaming at you, like, don't step on that! That's important! Don't step on that! It's like all of his prized possessions are just either either scattered on the floor or stuck in disgusting shitty boxes or in the garage. Like, not even in plastic or anything. Just completely open to the elements. All this stuff that's supposedly so rare and worth so much money. He just has, like, being crushed, going to shit, dirty, filthy... Uh, everything's a mess, nothing's organized, he doesn't even know where half the stuff is, what half the stuff is, um, uh, except, and is, yeah, the entire place, the kitchen, bedroom, everything is this disgusting, filthy hoarder mess, like, literally an episode of Hoarders. Except for the game room, except for the NES room. The NES room is the only room in this house, in this duplex or house that has any amount of polish whatsoever. If that's not the literal definition of a hoarder, then I don't know what is. That the, he literally places more value on his NES collection and his NES room than any aspect of his life, any aspect of this house or this living space, okay? And has greater priority over his bed, over the cleanliness of his house, like having like a decent place to live. No, it's all about the NES shrine. Fucking disturbed. And childish too. 
Yeah. Oh my, learn how to clean your home. You live in a duplex. There's no maintenance involved in cleaning a fucking duplex, dude. I get by in a house just fine. Oh my god, when I lived in an apartment that isn't that much smaller than his duplex, like, oh my god. Anyone can maintain that shit, okay? Like, like college kids maintain that level of a home. Number four. <laughs> Ian punches the air and twitches like a drug addict whenever he's worked up or angry. And I'm not even kidding you, like, let me, oh god, the Ian impression, okay, so this is like Ian whenever he's getting like a little bit nervous or something he hears that he doesn't like, he's like, he's punching the air, okay, he's like feeble little punches, because you know, this is feeble, frail little Ian, which we'll get into more later, or yeah, frail, frail, frail Ian, he goes like this, or he goes, uh, oh yeah, when he's like really getting into, he's like getting excited talking about something, he's like, it's going like this. Uh, like, what the hell is this? Like, he's always doing this or going like this or just, he, he's like free. And then he sits like this. This is how he sits. He he can't, he can't sit up straight. He's never used a muscle a day in his life. He has no physical prowess of any sort. So he, he sits like this in his chair all day long. Like, <laughs> dude, what is wrong with you? Well, I know the reason. It's I, I'm I'm certain it's because he's a, like a former drug addict. I've been told this actually that that's like drug former drug addict behavior that people make like really weird hand signals like that. I don't know why or how, but um, yeah, that's fucking weird. We'll get more into Ian's drug addiction later. Number five, Ian has been in a podcast for over a decade and still has zero speaking skills. Yeah. You would think, okay, yeah, I know, you know, sometimes we mess up when we're speaking. We say, oh, um, we say like. I mean, sure, this stuff happens here and there. You try to avoid it. Ian, after 10 years of public speaking for, yeah, his living, or not his full living, but I mean, just for his, uh, you know, side hustle on YouTube, because Pat makes all the money. I'm certain Ian make, gets paid nothing uh, for being on this podcast. He has zero speaking skills at all. Like, there's entire videos. He's just stammering, muttering. He can't even look at the camera, near the camera. He's like, um, well, um, like, um, so, well, like, um, this one time. So, um, Pat, you, you remember, um, that one time, like, yeah, like, 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 you've been doing this for 10 years. And this was a video, I think it was like a year ago or half a year ago. or Not that long ago, I was watching an upload of him. Just at uh, 10 years, it, you couldn't, you've gotten 0% better at this. Good God. <laughs> Number six, Pat hired a stripper to do a cringy skit together. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh yeah. So I uploaded this footage. You, I couldn't resist. This is just next level absurdity. But... He literally hired a stripper to come to his disgusting home and do this cringy ass painful skit with him together that at one point involved the stripper riding Patrick like a horsey, whipping him on the ass and then talking and then screaming at the top of her lungs. Uh, Sega does what Nintendo don't. And there's other parts of the skit that included, yeah, her actually straight up stripping and getting naked on the camera in front of him. And then as Pat, supposedly this whole skit takes place in Pat's uh, fantasy. This is Pat's fantasy. Even in Pat's wildest fantasy, he's still a, a, like, he's still a loser. He's still a failure. Like he fails to get with this woman because he, he faints as soon as he sees the naked woman. And also, yeah, the woman is just like, Completely condescending to him the whole time in this skit. And yeah, supposedly this was his big fantasy. Like, even in his dream world, he's still just a fucking basic loser. Oh, God. Yeah, it's, it's just a cringy, painful skit. And yeah, kids watch these videos too. And yeah, just the jokes in general in this video. I mean, he's such an AVGN ripoff. He's always coming up with the stupid, like the stupid AVGN quotes that he would do. Like, no, no, we're cooking with Crisco, like, kind of thing. Yeah, I always, just those dumb, stupid little catchphrases. He always throws stuff in there in his videos. He's just, 
You can. This guy's always been chasing AVGN's coattails from the start. I mean, we all know this. But yeah, just incredibly cringy and painful. And yeah, he has no sense of self-awareness whatsoever. Number seven. The only reason Pat ever got anywhere on YouTube is because they dick-rided the AVGN. Yeah. So, because he bought that stupid gold cart, that NES gold cart, that... Yeah, what cost him... I, I think the gray cart for that World Championships or whatever cost him, I think, 10 grand. And then the gold one cost him 30, if I recall. So this dude literally spent his life savings on a golden cartridge that he could lord over people to make himself feel special. Because you had to have every NES game. So yeah, I bought this cartridge so that he could have it appraised and then just keep it literally entombed in plastic to where it does no one any good. Like, I understand wanting things for the collectible value just to look at them, but... 30 grand, Pat. You need that 30 grand, okay? You don't have 30 grand to piss away, dude. At least not at that time, okay? You're like, as you're living in this, like, decaying duplex. Like, no, you needed that 30 grand to fix your life, dude. But, yeah, since he bought that cartridge, he's got to show it off all the time in all, in all the videos subsequently afterwards. And then, yeah, he, he got himself a collab with the AVGN due to having this thing and... You know, this guy's just always, like, kissed the right asses. I mean, that's how he made it on YouTube, is he kissed the right asses, basically. And, yeah, of course, n n since he showed up in the AVGN, that obviously gave him the huge boost he needed to become successful in YouTube and the algorithm and whatnot. So, yeah, he has all of his, all of his ego and success to thank for him to thank for all of that. Uh, number eight. Pat and Ian beg for money. On two Patreons. They have two YouTube welfares. Not just one. They have one for the podcast. And then they have one for game reviews. Which. When's the last time Pat's ever done a fucking game review? But yeah. He's getting hundreds. At least a hundred dollars. If not hundreds of dollars a month. For game reviews. That. Seriously. When the fuck is the last time this dude has done a game review? Yeah fucking ridiculous dude and then i so said the patreon rewards on this patreon too I, i've covered this patreon in the past on my on my channel but the rewards are so pathetic and condescending like one of them involves ian's writings i don't want it oh my god yeah the mind of frail little hipster fucking ian Oh my god, Edgelord Ian. Yeah, I, I do not want to know what these writings involve. They're probably the most emo, moody, like, sad, self-deprecating shit ever, uh, you could ever imagine. Ian's writings. Oh my god, I almost want to know. It, it would be fucking hilarious, actually. But yeah, it's locked by Patreon along with, yeah, I guess Pat and, Pat and Ian, I think each both have... A private, uh, private instant message chat where you can, you know, pay. Yeah, obviously, you're paying money for them to be your friends or to give you attention. Like, oh my god. Oh, I guess we already talked about this. Yeah, Pat spent his life savings on a golden NES cartridge. Yeah, I think you could have spent that money on better things, but I guess it's worth more than what he paid for it. I guess it was a good investment, but if you think he's ever gonna sell that shit, you're fooling yourself. That shit's uh, sticking around for life. Oh, yeah. Speaking of which, yeah, number 10. Uh, Pat refused. Uh, so I heard that, yeah, Pat refused an offer for his golden NES cartridge. Somebody offered him $96,000 for this golden cartridge, and he refused. But uh, this guy needs your money on Patreon. Oh, no. Please give me your money. I need all your money on Patreon, please. This dude can turn down $96,000 for a piece of plastic that's not going to do you a fuck of good on this earth. He doesn't need your money. Wake up. Don't give money to pathetic panhandlers on YouTube. Who think, who treat you like shit, by the way. Have some respect for yourself. Donate money to a worthy cause. Somebody who needs it more than a man in the moon. There's lots of people out there. Who actually need money? Who are like have are going through crises? People that are much more honest and hardworking too than Ian or Pat, which we'll get into more, of course, because we have forty more reasons why these two are assholes. Number eleven. Oh yeah. Speaking of which, Ian. 
scammed his fans out of $33,000 on GoFundMe for a back injury. Yeah, so to put this into perspective, Ian here, who, yeah, he works at the, who works at a game store. He does have a job along with making money off of YouTube. Well, I don't know how much money he gets from Pat. Uh, Pat's such a stingy asshole, but you wouldn't be doing it for free. So, yeah. Ian is too good to pay for health insurance. He won't pay for it. And it's even funnier because he's begging for this money for, you know, he didn't have his health insurance. Uh, you know, this was when Obama was president and you were, like, required to have health insurance. Okay. So, didn't have health insurance, though. He's too, too, precious Ian is too good to have health insurance. And instead thinks or believes that his medical bills are your problem. That you need to pay for his medical bills. You know, it's not like people don't have medical bills of their own to pay for, along with their own houses and families and taxes and rent and, uh, you know, bills, all this sort of stuff, your grocery bills, everything. You know, all of life's, you know, little little trials, but it's not on him to pay for his own medical bills. And you want to know the funnier thing, too. So this wasn't even a real back injury, and they you were even dumb enough to admit this. So what happened was, I guess... Ian had one little, it wasn't even a pinched nerve. It was like a tiny little nerve, like just had a little bit of pressure on it. So it wasn't even pinched or anything. Like it, it just one little nerve in his back was out of place or not even out of place. I don't know how to describe it. They called it NES. And yeah, I'm not kidding. They said this condition was called the NES. Which, yeah, are you fucking kidding me? They're probably just laughing in your face as they like made this shit up. Uh, but it was called SNES or NES. I'm not even kidding you. You can look at the video yourself. And so this condition that Pat managed to blow 33 grand on. Do you want to know the, the solution? Do you want to know the cure, the medical treatment for this particular um, ailment of Ian's? This, this ailment that was debilitating his life? Do five minutes of stretches in the morning and it will be completely cured in the matter of a handful of weeks. This guy without shame, without remorse, blew $33,000 of fan donated money on GoFundMe. Money that could have gone to anything else, to anyone with an actual serious life-threatening illness or injury or disease. Okay, people who actually need this because they have no means, okay, of paying for some of these ridiculous, you know, surgeries and procedures that people have to go through. God forbid, you know, somebody have cancer or anything like that. You know, you're going to steal that money away. Blow 33 grand, waste the doctor's time and all this other stuff. That's if this money you actually went to medical bills, which I'm not convinced it did because this is phony as fuck. But if it did, you're either admitting that you, yeah, you did all of that. You wasted your, the, the, you know, the doctor's time. You wasted your fans' money to figure out that you need to do stretches in the morning because you've never, literally never, never performed a single, single moment of physical exercise in your entire life, Ian. Uh, uh, I can barely sit up. My back, oh, uh, yeah, I can barely sit up. Okay, because uh, it's, it's too much work to sit on my back. I'm just going to, like, let it crumple. And let my, like, tiny little nerve in my back get fucking crushed or, you know, ha put stress on it by, like, never sitting on my back so that it's weak as fuck. And all my muscle lining in my back and my body has died. Okay, because you gotta, you gotta be laying down when you're sitting down. You can't sit up like a man. So either that or you do, did what I suspect you did and just blew all the money on games and weed. Uh, yeah. Which I'm convinced that's the case because how could you have blown... 33 grand. I don't care how incompetent these clinics or hospitals are that they made up this whole bullshit story about how the doctors were all just super incompetent and didn't, you know, ordered all these expensive procedures without realizing this like really basic other option. And you know, if my back hurt or if my arm hurt or my shoulder hurt or anything, the first thing I would do before seeking any medical attention is to do stretches and exercise. Okay. If it was feeling stiff or it hurt or was sore, Oh my god, I had chronic neck pain once in the back of my neck once. And you know what I had to do? Yeah. Oh my god, I had to do some stretches. Oh my god. Oh, oh no. And guess what happened? It went 
completely away in the matter of like a month or two. This was like four or five years back, like after I kind of like twitched or strained my neck a little bit. Or not actually strained it, but like I kind of, you know, I rustled something in it. You know what didn't help? Laying in bed all day long or like laying on the couch like this or, or this or, you know, just playing the video games like this. <sighs> Fucking Christ, kid. 33 grand and they claimed it cost even more they said a lot of that did come out of pocket yet and i gotta love this whole video where pat was uh discussing this whole situation in full afterwards where he revealed this information he he was he was the he was the one who convinced Ian. Oh, you shouldn't have to pay for all of this it, it's not on you to pay for all this he says who the fuck is it on that what the hell thinks makes you think you get a free pass for your medical bills when nobody else does what makes you special than every, any other american okay you get special treatment give me a fucking break Frail, precious little Ian. <sighs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Number 12. Ian gets stoned at the retro game store that he works at. So this retro game store that he likes to imply that he's the manager of. He's not the manager. Uh, his manager is actually a guy that's like seven years younger than him, which I'm sure just eats him up because you know the type of ego egotistical assholes these two are. But... Uh, you know, Pat and Ian. But, yeah, he gets stoned at work. In his own words, he gets stoned at work. And, yeah, he talked him his way into getting a medical card for marijuana. I think he's used Tommy or something like that. Which, yeah. He got money to blow on weed, but you can't buy health insurance. <laughs> and, yeah. He mentioned once on his channel, too, about how... A customer came into the store once and was complaining that Ian smelled like marijuana. Which, yeah, seriously, already you're getting stoned at work. Like, real tough job you have there. Oh, I'm Ian. I have such a hard life. I get stoned at work all day. <laughs> no. God, he always bitches about work, too. It's hilarious. He always bitches about how much uh, how much price checking he has to do on eBay with all these trade-ins. Like, oh, poor Ian. He's so busy. Uh, meanwhile, you have time to get stoned at work and, like, reduce your cognitive function by at least, like, fucking cut that shit in half. And still be able to perform your job. I don't think you're that overworked. Okay, getting high is a leisure activity, okay? That's not something you do if you're actually working, okay? If you actually have real work to do, it's a leisure activity you do and you're relaxing. Or if you're watching a movie, you're, like, sleeping and shit like that. Oh my god. But yeah, the customer complained they smell like marijuana, and rightfully so, because yeah, you're working, you're on the clock, you shouldn't be stoned. You smell like weed, okay? Not everyone smokes weed, Ian, okay? You can be respectful of others who don't like the smell of marijuana. Also, most importantly, uh, children come to retro game stores and should not have to be exposed to the smell of fucking pot and marijuana, okay? And in a public business, too. Uh, yeah, you're gonna get stoned around little fucking kids, and yeah, I know retro prices are crazier than ever, but yeah, some parents still take their kids to these stores. They do. You don't, you don't, okay. If, some, if I had little kids or like young kids or even like a 12 or 13 year old and like there's some asshole fucking druggy like getting stoned and smelling like pot around him while I was working at a game store, this place where I took my kids, I'd grab that fucker by the ear and drag him to the manager. I'd be like, take care of this guy. Take, you know, fire this guy, send him home for the day. I'm not, you're exposing people to fucking marijuana smoke like no that's bullshit okay like kids and shit that's fucked you're fucked in the head if you think that's okay but he basically told this uh customer complaining to fuck off and i'm not even kidding you like i i forget exactly what he said i think it might have been fuck off or at least when he in regards to this situation he said yeah fuck off you know like you know this guy complaining that i stink like weed Fucking entitled dick yeah you're gonna get stoned at work i work so hard you know he's, he's always bitching about fucking work and how busy it is yeah you know i'm pretty sure if it was rush hour uh, and i was working retail i wouldn't be getting stoned okay and reducing my cognitive function okay and yeah, that would be hella more stressful oh my god 13 pat deletes comments like a damage controlling lunatic yeah you cannot even get by and so much having an opi opinion much less calling these guys out or questioning them over anything on their channel they will remove and block you instantly without a second thought. Oh, they're such a bunch of crybabies about that. They can't take even the slightest criticism. They won't even respond to it. 
They just straight up delete it. They literally can They're the type of people that cannot physically process or emotionally or mentally process criticism yet. I mean, they'll dole it out all the time. They dole it out, but they can't take it. They cry like little bitches and they hide in their safe spaces while deleting the comments. And then, yeah, they have the fucking nerve to tell other people that they're, you know what I mean? Like that they complain or that they're safe space like little bitches. Like look in the fucking mirror. Uh, oh, we went into this. In number 14, Ian is incapable of sitting up straight. Sit up straight like a fucking man. This is supposedly your job or you're on the clock here uh, with this podcast. Sit up straight. Oh my fuck. God, what is with these YouTubers and being like skinny and fat and chubby at the same time? It's not a muscle in their freaking body. They've never done a day of physical labor in their life or exercise. Like nothing, man. They just cut gym class. They probably like had their mom's forged doctor's notes for gym class. So they could, yeah, they couldn't, yeah, the dodge, you couldn't, didn't want to play dodgeball. It's too, uh, <laughs> it's too emotionally damaging, you know. Oh, I got hit by a rubber ball. Oh, no. Number 15. Ian leads people to believe he manages a game store. I cannot begin to tell you how many people I've interacted with or talked to that think that Ian is the manager of this game store. He is he does not run this game store. He works on he has a manager. He does not run this place, but I don't know if he's ever said on his channel that he does, or I think he just heavily implies it. But as so many people think he runs this place, he doesn't. At the very least, he's not the only manager. Maybe he's a co-manager, but even then, I, th I think I think he just th doesn't run the store at all. Number sixteen, Pat got owned by Review Tech USA. How what? How much of a pathetic loser do you have to get to be to get verbally beat down multiple times and get owned by Review Tech USA, one of the biggest biggest lol cows on the entire YouTube platform? Pathetic. Number 17, Pat and Ian shill for Dollar Shave Club. Yeah, fucking Ian, the guy who you can't even dis you can't even pick between a mommy's basement joke or a homeless joke because he's such a hairy, pale shut-in, okay, this like hairy caveman looking guy telling you he had such a good experience with Dollar Shave Club. Okay, which yeah, Dollar Shave Club for the record, it has shit reviews. It's a shit service. Why do you need a shaving subscription service that's fucking stupid? Buy a razor. Just buy one razor and it'll be like 10 times better than anything any subscription service like that will ever send you in the mail. Buy a fucking shaver and be done with it. You don't need to subscribe to a shaving service. That's preposterous. That's so stupid. But yeah, they'll shill that shit down your throat and also at the same time, subsequently, accuse other people of being shills. Like Review Tech USA, again. Yeah, you're going to accuse him of being an Amico show because he wore an Amico t-shirt while interviewing Tommy. Who are you to call anybody a fucking shill though? You're not, the, you don't have the right to call anybody out for that shit because you shill yourself. Okay, I'm not disagreeing. I mean, yeah, Review Tech is obviously a shill, but yeah. Who are you to fucking call anybody out for that shit? 18. Oh, yeah. Pat, may, Pat the NES Punk makes multiple personalized ads. I'm talking skits, like personalized ads. Shilling manscaped the ball trimmer yeah for his kid to his kid audience uh to his children uh, to children on the internet too no less going on and on about the wonders of shaving your balls shaving your privates and yeah just the cringiest corniest fucking skits i mean yeah cover those two just literally trying to relate this shit to back to gaming like and when he does these ads he literally has this look on his face like i'm not even shitting you he looks like he has a gun to his head and somebody's forcing him to do it. Like, his eyes look watery. His face... He looks, like, out of this world. Like, I don't know what it is. He looks like... He looks like an older Michael Jackson, almost, in these videos. I don't know how to describe it. Like, he looks so, like, deranged and weird in these videos. Like, he looks like he's crying as he's doing this video. Like, I don't know if it, he's just embarrassed or if he's just that much of a fucking whack job. I don't know. This guy's a lunatic, though. He's fucking strange as hell. And yeah, he's really obsessed with your privates. He would have you believe he's very obsessed with your privates that he thinks you need to you need to shave your privates so that you can get those good deals at the swap meet. And uh, 
Yeah, you need to shave your D-pad, keep your D-pad clean, and all this other stuff. It's the best thing to happen to gamers since the Konami code. Yeah, these are little literal quotes from his ball shaving advertisements. Ridiculous. Ridiculous human being. Ridiculous man. Yeah, good luck ever finding a date on Tinder after that shit. Yeah, you're going to be known as the ball shaver guy. The ball shaver flea market guy. He does it on the flea market videos. It's like the only videos that get views or like good views that people like the flea market videos. Oh, number 19. Ian thinks that is it is okay for business... Oh, I didn't finish the sentence. Okay, <laughs> I didn't finish the sentence. Oh, I know what I was going to say though. Okay, I, I, already, I already know what I was going to write down, so... Ian thinks that is it is okay for businesses to sell you something and if you decide to return it or whether you decide to return it or if it's broken and you need to return it, he thinks it's okay for them to give you in-store credit instead of actually refunding you your money that you paid for a product you're not satisfied with or a product that's just straight up broken. So again, just another example of them being completely pro-corporate, like corporate apologist, fuck the gamers, fuck the people every single time, pro-establishment, because we're Pat the NES, Punk and Ian, and we're just these two salty, miserable curmudgeons. Uh, yeah, so a business can sell you something that's broken or faulty, you come back, you have to waste time and energy coming back, returning it, wasting your gas to return this product that they sold you that was faulty or that was a sham. And they can give you in-store credit, which means like you have to give them your business again. You have to buy something in their store. You're not entitled to your money back to spend wherever you please. They, they're going to Shanghai you into giving you them your business after fucking you over once before selling something that selling you something you weren't satisfied with that Ian thinks that's perfectly okay and fuck you for thinking otherwise in-store credit is fine we're entitled to your money we st we took your money we stole your money we get to keep it okay and if you can't find anything in the store you want then you're fucked out of all your money then we get to keep all of it only Ian only edgelord Ian could be that fucking stupid I swear number 20 Pat and Ian apparently hate, they hate, and were screaming and crying. Yeah, yeah, they talk about people complaining about this shit. Yeah, they're complaining and crying about gender reveal parties and crying that, yeah, the, people need to stop. You need to stop. Gender reveal parties need to stop, they say. What the fuck do you, oh yeah, God forbid anybody, you know, a mother out there, like have a party that they want to, <clears throat> they want to share with their other family and friends. The new addition to their family, their newborn child. God forbid you have a party, you decide to throw a party in celebration of a newborn child in your family. Like, God forbid you give a shit about your newborn child to come to be. Pat and Ian don't care about the fact that anybody's having a newborn child. No, they just fucking hate and shit on everybody. They're just a bunch of, couple of salty sailors. So yeah, no, they don't give a fuck. Yeah, oh, you have a new addition to your family. Fuck that, you need to stop that, yeah. God forbid, you know, you're, you're happy or you want to celebrate a newborn cherished member of your family, a newborn baby, a newborn child. Fuck that, right? God. Number 21. Pat and Ian talk out their ass about Game of Thrones like dozens of times despite fully admitting that they've never seen it. They'll go on about the fans, what the fans want to see, what fans come to expect, all of this stuff just so they have something to talk about. Fully admit that they've never seen the show. They just talk out of their ass, though. They just love... They think they're just so confident that they're right about anything and all their assumptions and all their statements that they don't even have to know about something before they just talk out their ass about it multiple times. They know. Trust them. Listen to them. As they've never even fucking seen it. And they're just pulling the stuff out of their ass. They're just that type of person. Number 22. Pat begs for money to do game and console reviews despite never even doing any anymore. Yeah, the Patreon. Where, like, he literally has an entire Patreon dedicated to his game reviews where he begs money to do them. Like, he's on YouTube welfare for the shit and he doesn't even do those videos anymore. Barely ever. Barely ever. Maybe two or three times a year tops. And he's getting, like, over $100 every single month. Beggar, panhandler, give me the money. I'm Patrick, the NES pumpkin. Despite the fact that I turned down $98,000 for a plastic cartridge, I'm in desperate need of money. I need money to live. Who donate? God, it's only these. Who donates to these pathetic YouTubers? You're the biggest goddamn simp. Oh yeah, another one. Yeah, 
Ian charges money to see to see his writings. Which, yeah, we talked about that already. Yeah, Ian's fucking edgelord writings. I do not want to know. Oh my god. I, yeah, I mean, I do. Like, I want to read it to laugh at it. But, oh my god. That's going to be a fucking train wreck, dude. Number 24, Ian does not have a car. Yeah, he gets, he's one of these, he's almost a 40-year-old man. He's like mid-30s at least. And yeah, he's still getting rides from people to go places. Like, he, he's getting rides from his friends or his girlfriend or his mom. Yeah, I think he does have a girlfriend. I know, that's a scary thought. Ian reproducing, uh, putting, pushing more Ians into the world. Like, oh my god. Oh my god. But... Yeah, he he does not seem to have a car. He always mentions or talks about getting rides. There's a story where he mentioned he was like trapped at some freak's house. He was talking about some guy that he met at his game store that invited him to his house, and the guy ended up being a total creeper and stalker. And yeah, he he had to get a ride home because he didn't get a ride there or back. He does not have a car. This 35 year old man does not have a car. He's just a total deadbeat. Get your life in order. You begged. You got $33,000 that you scanned from your audience and you managed manage to piss it all away on weed. Okay, in video games or just, yeah, phony hospital bills. You couldn't buy. You could have bought yourself the nicest goddamn car there is. You could have bought yourself a top of the line brand new spanking new car. But nope. You got to have your priorities in life. You know, it's all about getting stoned and playing video games. Number 25, Ian does not have health insurance. Yeah, we talked about that. Does not have health insurance. Thinks this is totally fine. Number 26, Pat uses an emulator to review the NES and SNES games for his stupid books. So he has these books, where basically, as far as, from what I can understand, he has these books where he reviews every single NES game and every single SNES game. He reviews them all. He doesn't play the actual copies of the games, though. He reviewed them from an emulator. That's completely disingenuous and shady. So you're playing these on an emulator, which emulators do not run. I mean, I, I don't have a problem with emulators per se, like for if people want to play games. Like, oh, it's funny. Oh, no, Pat and, and Ian, aren't they the ones who tell people, that, you, know, you, you, you know, playing emulators is wrong. You need to buy the physical copy of the game unless it's a game that we, that we say is okay to emulate. Okay, if it's too expensive, you have to come to like us for permission. We'll approve what games you can emulate and what you can't, what you can't. But yeah, they're always talking down on emulation. Yeah, it's it's hilarious. That's even more ironic than that Pat literally reviewed these games off of an emulator. When he owns the NES games, but no, he, had to, he played them on an emulator. Which, yeah, emulators do not run exactly the same as the fiscal game. You cannot accurately review the game. Sometimes they run better. Sometimes they're fixed. Sometimes they run worse. Sometimes there's glitches or lag. Okay, and you don't know what's the original game and what isn't if you never played these games before. But yeah, you reviewed those off of an emulator. So what good are those reviews, honestly, at the end of the day? I don't consider that to be worthy of anything. <laughs> oh, yeah. So number 27, Pat lost his mind at a flea market over a Lego box. So he was like selling. Yeah, I forget the story exactly. I think, yeah, he was selling an empty Lego box that was worth some amount of money, apparently. And he tried selling it to some guy and... I think he tried, he sell, sold it for too much of a price, but he made, he like tried telling the guy that like, oh, if you buy this, or he's either buying it or selling it. I think he was selling it. I can't imagine him buying a Lego box. So he was selling it to some guy, one of the two. And he told the guy, basically, he's trying to get a good deal out, out of the guy and like name dropped his YouTube channel. He said, oh, if you, if you buy this or if you, if I, if you let me buy this, I'll, uh, oh, you know, it'll be good press for you because you'll be on my YouTube channel and I'm a big YouTube star. And then the guy refused and then Pat like literally lost his fucking mind over this shit because egotistical goddamn Pat thinks that he's the goddamn Lord of the universe and he thinks he's owed and entitled everything on this goddamn earth. Typical Pat behavior there. Uh, number 28. Yeah, oh yeah, yep. Uh, and this ties in with that. Pat constantly tries to barter low deals at the flea markets. Try to talk people out of... Like, the shit will already be priced so low. And he'll try to downcharge them even more when he's buying shit. But then at the same time, when he sells shit, he's always charging top dollar dick prices. Like, just bullshit prices. Like, probably eBay prices plus a couple bucks, typically. Uh, he's such an asshole at the flea market. Such a dick. Such an unwiped asshole. Number 29. 
Pat is extremely bitter towards anyone who presents him with even mild criticism and holds grudges against them for years on end. He will never, never forget anybody who ever criticizes him. Never. It's like he keeps a Microsoft Excel spreadsheet in his fucking head of anybody who's ever wronged him. He keeps a little black book. Like, literally, it, this has happened before. Like, the quartering, Review Tech USA, I mean, just burning bridges over, yeah. Uh, Review Tech, he had a hate boner over Review Tech when, like, he really didn't even criticize him much. He kind of just put him into question, and then Pat lost his fucking mind, and then, yeah, Review Tech beat him down, which, yeah. How sad do you have to be to get owned by Review Tech USA? Good God. That is sad. Again. Number 30, Ian says other people need to stop complaining about everything when he complains about literally everything. Yeah, complete hypocrite. He is always bitching and whining about everything. And then he, yeah, he talks about other people complaining. Look in the mirror again. Number 31, Pat didn't even know what and where half the stuff in his collection was in his home collection tour. What's this? What's this? What's in here? Why do I have this? Complete hoarder. He doesn't give a shit about the stuff he collects. He does not give a shit. He has no pride in his collection at all. Look at his disgusting home tour. That guy is a wreck. That guy is a... That guy is a midlife crisis waiting to happen. If it hasn't already. Number 32. Pat and Ian hate reproduction cartridges because they are gatekeepers of games. Yeah, they just want to protect their own investments in their collection. Of course, they hate reproduction games. I mean, I get... I don't like reproduction games... If they are pretending to be the real thing. But a lot of reproductions out there, they don't advertise themselves as the real thing. They have a completely different sticker and label where to where it's not con to be confused. People are just making them so people can play the games on the original hardware. Okay, and not have to pay an arm and a leg. But no, Pat and Ian hate, hate this. They hate this. Uh, number 33, they both look homeless when they both shave. Yeah, sometimes Pat does not shave. And... He just looks like terrible five o'clock shadow. I mean, he looks like a Simpsons character. I don't know how to describe it. Then. And then obviously Ian just looks like the most homeless, pathetic bum whenever he doesn't shave. But yeah, again, you know, Dollar Shave Club is so amazing. It changed my life. Pat is, oh, number 34. Pat is an asshole to people at conventions, to fans. He is both a snob and he's completely smug. And yeah, multiple people... I've gone on the record saying this. I myself have had plenty of comments of people saying that when they met Pat uh, at the conventions that he's just a smarmy, smug dick. Because of course he is, because he thinks he's the goddamn lord of the universe. He has this giant ego over his pathetic YouTube channel where he's like surrounds himself with like plushies and toys. And he thinks he's a big boy uh, for this, for making a living off of just crying about video games and regurgitating game news on the internet, on YouTube. For a bunch of children and mentally questionable adults. Uh, he has this ego. He thinks he's a big superstar. Uh, number 35. <laughs> Spoonie. Spoonie. Remember the guy who uh, threatened to, to rape a woman? Uh, some other YouTuber? Uh, that weirdo? That guy who basically like was getting to act like he is just on drugs in general? Like That strange dude? That shut-in guy? Uh, he claimed that Pat the NES Punk was too awkward to deal with. And, well, Pat, I mean, yeah, have you seen his videos? Have you seen his skits? He's the most cringy, uh, some of the most cringy, awkward shit I've seen on all of YouTube. So, yeah, it doesn't surprise me at all. I'd rather hang out with, with Spoonie than Pat, too. Number 36. He got in. Oh, yeah, we mentioned this a bit. Oh, no, no, this is different. Okay. He got insanely butthurt over the quarterings opinions about him and went on a 15 minute tangent. Him and Ian uh, trying to, yeah, just throwing down on the quartering, just dissing this guy. They got so worked up over this guy for 15 minutes straight. They went on this this crazy rant about him. Which, yeah, the quartering is a fucking doe eyed, you know, beggar piece of shit. I don't like the quartering at all. Uh, that guy's that guy's just a like e begging like little snotty nosed bitch. But yeah, it, it's hilarious how butthurt they got over the quartering. Who yeah, like I said, just is not somebody to get worked up over. I mean, in regards to him, like attempting to diss you and all. If the quartering dissed me, I'd be like, I don't give a fuck. Yeah, I'd be like, who's gonna listen to that idiot? Number thirty seven. He has the audacity to call Review Tech USA or anybody else a shill. Yes, we went we went over that. Number 38, uh, Pat is butthurt, very butthurt and jealous of The Last Gamer. 
they did this whole 15 minute segment about the last gamer about how he got the guinness world record for the most games in his collection pat does not smile once he looks stone cold jaded and miserable he's like just the whole time he's just got the stick up his ass like he looks like such a karen and not only that, he does everything in his power in this video just to just try and like poke holes in this collection. There's this one point where his like eyes light up because Ian mentions that not all of the games are completed box or that they're used. And he like his pat oh they're oh they're used. Oh, oh, they're not all completed box. Oh, he does oh, oh, okay. Uh yeah, no, he yeah, even is it's bad when your own fans or your own viewers in the comments even tell you that you're being a butthurt bitch, and that's exactly what happened in that video too. Oh my god, Pat. Yeah, there are people in this world with bigger collections than us. Get over it. It's not about what other people think of your collection. Does your collection mean anything to you? Does it have value to you? Well, apparently it doesn't to him. Because he's so butthurt about somebody else's collection. You have obviously have no pride or happiness in your own. You're just completely butthurt, jealous, insecure idiot. Well, your game collection. Who lords over their game collection over people that they think it makes them special for that matter too? I have a big game collection. I don't think I'm better than anybody else for it. Like, I don't take my pride in myself as a person on this earth based off of my game collection. Like, that's fucked up. That's weird. That shit only flies on the internet, too. In real life, people would laugh at you and think you're an idiot. Like, actual society, actual real life. There are people in... Most people in real life, many people in real life, don't give a fuck about games or just play them casually. They definitely wouldn't be praising you or going, you know, bowing down to you over the fact that you have a large game collection. Only these psycho neckbeard simps on the internet, which you spend way too much time on the inter internet being surrounded in, in, in interacting with these types of people. Interact with people in the real world and you'll quick... Well, I apologize for that jump cut. My camera here decided to randomly go out for no reason. And it's been days, but we're back at it again. I got to cap off this list. Oh my God. These lists, if you don't do them one, if you don't do it one and done, it, it's really hard to jump back into it. It took me a bit of motivation to, to do this one again. You, you kind of just like to get it all out and then you end it, you know, but here we go. Cap it off the list here. Uh, number 39. Pat is not much better than Chris Bores, also known as the irate gamer when it comes to being a copycat of the AVGN. I mean, yeah. Again, just watch that stripper video or watch some of his other skits. He's always coming up with, like, these dumbass quips or these catchphrases. Like, now we're cooking with Chris Go or, you know, things like that. I just... It's so AVGN. He's just completely knocking them off, which, yeah, it's just all the more funny considering he has his entire career on YouTube to think to that guy basically and well i mean irate gamer is worse i mean that guy literally just fucking stole shit from avgn and apparently nobody cares about that now or they've forgiven him even though his entire legacy on youtube is thanks to him being um a complete plagiarizer 100 percent plagiarizer stealing views stealing money from the avgn it's the only reason anybody even knows who that guy is. So as far as I'm concerned, I would never watch the Irate Gamer. Even if he posted the best content on YouTube there is, he owes his legacy to that. So I wouldn't watch that guy for anything, personally. Number 40. <laughs> oh, man. So uh, Patrick claims it is offensive and horrible to believe that Ian spending $33,000 of fan money to find out that he needs to do five minute stretches in the morning is a scam. To believe that is horrible and offensive. And yeah, to quote Pat uh, in this sort of resolution, re revelation video where, yeah, they finally discover all this information and disclose it to the fans. Uh, to quote Pat, one of the quotes from the video. Uh, so supposedly, yeah, the story that he presents in this video goes that, yeah, Ian didn't want to do the crowdfunding routes, but I guess Pat convinced him. You know, because honor, yeah, Ian was so honorable, but then Pat was like, oh, you, yeah, one of the po defining points he said was, oh, well, you shouldn't have to pay for all this. That's what Pat said or claimed to have said. Like, get the fuck out of town. I mean, I, yeah, I already went into that before about how much bullshit that is that, yeah, they had their fans pay for that, but. God, yeah, to think that's that, 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 that was a disingenuous scam is just so horrible and wrong. And also leading into number 41. Pat goes on to say that he will always remember you. If yeah, if you're one of these people in the comments who doubted, who doubted, who thought that Ian just blew the money and fucking weed or cigarettes or video games or whatever. He, he goes, I will always remember you. 
He gives you this goony, crazy, creepy fucking look. He's like, I will always remember you. I'm not even kidding you. Yeah, like, uh, <laughs> I might react to that video one day in general because there's like a lot of weird, disingenuous bullshit in that video specifically in general. But yeah, it just... <laughs> Fuck off, Pat. <laughs> I'm absolutely thinks that's th that that is a scam and you're probably not gonna be able to convince me otherwise at this point number 42 they think they have a real job talking and regurgitating gaming news sitting in a room with Mario plushies on the internet uh yeah no th this is in no way a real job and you know it it's even funnier due to the fact that they you know make fun of people with a uh, quote-unquote high school jobs which, yeah, look in the fucking mirror, you two. Like, oh, what do you think you're... Yeah, okay, Ian, you know, was a clerk at a game store, which, I mean, yeah, you shouldn't be... T you know, you already sound like a dick talking about high school jobs. Like, first off, like, yeah, fuck off with that shit. You know, don't be disparaging what people do for a living. You know, as long as it's an honest, like, actual real career. I mean, yeah, not just sitting in front of a... Sitting in a room with, like, Mario plushies. Like, yeah, freaking bitching whatever your butt heard about on any given day, you know. But, like, actual work, you know, providing a service to society. But you already sound like a dick saying that. But then it's even worse when you consider that, yeah, Ian, you're a clerk at a game store. And then your side hustle is talking about video games in front of the camera on the internet in a plushy-filled room. And then Pat here, as far as I can tell, yeah, is it, just, just the podcast. So, yeah, he might, like, write a book or two. But yeah, high school jobs, like, fuck off. <laughs> Stop. Uh, oh yeah, number 43. Oh yeah, so Pat apparently, yeah, he got very butthurt uh, recalling a time that he invited a girl to his condo and who, yeah, after a date. And then she left after seeing the state of this uh, this condo. Or duplex, sorry. Is it? Yeah, I think it's a duplex. Yeah, so he, there's a video that got removed in regards to this that I've heard about where he really, really went off and like blamed this girl and was all like, yeah, she's the one with the problem, not me, blah, blah, blah. Like, you know, what a bitch, all this stuff. I don't know exactly what he said. I never got the, I never had the privilege of seeing this video. Uh, I'm pretty sure it got taken down, it seemed, or at least it's dis or at least we don't know where it is. But he recalls this again later in a different video, which I have seen, which he definitely tone, which in where he tones the story down somewhat, or about the severity, I guess, of it. But he still admits in this kind of edited video, uh, he still admits, yeah, like the chick took one look at the place and like said like this is some 40 year old virgin shit basically in his own words that's what he's like, you know quoted her as saying which yeah i mean fucking hilarious and yeah yeah you know it's it, pat it's not so much the game collection it's the state of the game collection in the state of your home dude like how can you be so blind okay no woman in your dating pool like you're probably like in your 30s when this happened is gonna respect a guy or be attracted to a guy who's like literally <laughs> living in a fucking hurricane like the after effects of a fucking hurricane hitting a game shelf of a fucking duplex that you live in i mean no <laughs> this, <laughs> this fucking dumpster of a home uh yeah like judge yeah because we've yeah we all know yeah you guys have all seen my reaction to his house tour series i mean you saw how bad that place was yeah you're gonna like blame any woman for not you know <laughs> thinking that you're a suitable you know romantic partner i guess if that's the state of your home and your life like come on yeah I, I think that was a pretty accurate description on on that girl's part yeah some 40 year old virgin shit that, that's <laughs> i fully concur with that analysis i don't blame her one bit for that Uh, let's see, number 44. Oh, yeah. Pat appeared on Pawn Stars, uh, for, yeah, with his, yeah, his gold cartridge that he had no intention to sell. He had no intention. Do you think he had any intention to sell this golden NES cartridge when he appeared on Pawn Stars? No, he would have never sold that for any price. He just now, he already, yeah, we already found out that he turned down an offer of $96,000 for this thing. He's not letting that thing go for anything. He's going to be buried in that thing. He's going to be buried with that thing in a crypt, dude. Pat's never letting go of this. 
and he has cartridge as long as he lives. Hell no. <laughs> but and yet he appeared on Pawn Stars and yeah, hilariously wearing the exact same outfit that he wore in his yeah, terrible junk his junkyard uh, house tour series. <laughs> Oh, God, his flea market of a home. Yeah, exact same clothes. And the, yeah, these videos were like, yeah, this was like years and years apart. Like th that, those video uploads from the Pawn Stars, which, yeah, all but proves that, yeah, pa Pat does, doesn't ever buy clothing. And he's just wearing, probably wearing the same clothing for decades plus. I mean, God, he already dresses like a child. You know, he like wears the little cargo shorts with the, the T-shirt that's like too small for him. I mean, yeah, <laughs> just yeah wearing 50 shades of brown basically oh uh, yeah oh yeah okay number i didn't even read this one number 45 yes yeah, so how did that lead up into it so well yeah number 45 pat dresses like a little boy like every outfit that he wears uh, that he just dresses like in a t-shirt and cargo shorts it's like shit i wore when i was like 12 years old you know just, uh, yeah, just as, yeah, it's like stuff that we wear as weekend loungewear these days is just what he wears all the time. He doesn't have anything else. Uh, number 46. Pat will charge you money to make a recording where you send him a set sentence to recite. Yeah, I, f I forget the name of this service. Uh, more YouTubers are doing this. Uh, I think Review Tech USA does it too, I think. Cameo, that's what it's called. Yeah, so, yeah, this is the new way of e-begging. Yeah, even some celebrities do this, like washout celebrities. Uh, Bam Margera does this, apparently. Uh, yeah, you can give, give money to someone and they just give you, what, like a little 10-second recording that, yeah, you basically just message them, like, what you want them to say, and they'll say it for you. But yeah, like, what a what a freaking sellout. And it costs like 25 bucks. Yeah, what, they just hold up the phone. They make like a little 15 second video. Oh, shout out to, to so-and-so, Jack and Jill. Uh, I, I think you're great. You know, you just get them to say whatever you want. So, I almost, I almost wondered one day. I almost was wondering if I were to give him $25 to give a shout out to Afro Gamer dude if he if he would actually do it or well he, oh god he's such a fucking he's such a schmarmy uh just hold yeah he just holds any grudge until the end of time though he absolutely has seen my channel there's no way he's actively searching YouTube for hate videos about him I think he's probably seen every single one like whether it's 10 views or a thousand no he yeah he he probably remembers me i will always remember you yeah he'll he'll always remember me i think you guys yeah until until the end of time <laughs> yeah you'll be thinking about us as he's like yeah sitting there on life support like oh afro gamer dude oh, radical rick <laughs> i'm i'm sure <laughs> review tech usa yeah him too oh definitely him that's for sure yeah or the quartering <laughs> uh number 47 oh yeah pat admitted in the podcast between him and mjr that all of the collectors in his area don't like him yeah everybody hates this guy everybody who knows this guy thinks he's a dick and he fully admitted this like with with glee he didn't even have any sense not to admit this why would you admit that everybody hates you when you air in your area that makes you look like such a dick everybody who knows you in real life doesn't like you all the other collectors think you're too much of an asshole and i bet half of them are assholes too like anybody who's a notable big time collector with you know, what however many games enough games to put you on the map for collecting a lot of these people are dicks anyway but even they're like no fuck this pat guy oh my goodness Everybody hates Pat, you guys. Yeah, he can't. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah, number 48. Oh, yeah, in the same podcast. Pat also claimed that John Hancock is the nicest guy. He's the nicest guy in the world. He says, he's, he's the nicest guy in the world, he says. Yeah, the guy who wrote... <laughs> I don't even have to go into this one. Fuck, I probably already have. Yeah, the, the guy who, yeah, runs a fake museum scan, a scam conning... Thousands of susceptible, naive people on the internet out of games and money and donations running a fake charity scam for, you know, building a video game museum who's now in hiding after reaping thousands of games and conning and lying to count countless people. Um, you know, e-begging, lying, 
yeah, Teresa's family, like, dirt, everything under the sun. Yeah, the nicest guy in the world. Yeah, maybe in Pat's yeah, pathetic vain world where everyone he knows is probably a duplicitous asshole just like him. It's the only people who are gonna put up with this ass. Ugh. God, number 49. Thinks that obvious... Oh, yeah, that... that uh, and yeah, Nintendo World Champions. So apparently, there's some reproduction ca carts floating out there about this game that are newly made. Uh, he thinks an obvious reproduction cart. I think he. Cl yeah, I, I didn't see this video for myself. I couldn't stand. I can only stand watching so much, so much of these YouTubers. But uh, I'm pretty sure he claimed to have called it evil. I think he called this reproduction cart evil because yeah, of course, you know, Pat. You no, know, because Pat paid what? Like his life savings. He emptied, dumped his life savings on this plastic cart, and now somebody else can play the game without doing the same. Yeah, God forbid people can play a game, more people can play a game with this reproduction cart that, as far as I can tell, was obviously a reproduction, or it was clearly labeled as one. It's not pretending. It doesn't seem to be pretending to be the real thing, like trying to pull the wool over people's eyes. It's just, here's a way to play this game just on a reproduction cart on the original hardware. So you're not otherwise forced to spend a hundred thousand dollars on this game and of course of course of course pat pat the gatekeeper has problems with this and before we get to number 50 we do have an extra on the list we do have one extra we have a bonus pat shills for a ball shaver yeah he pat multiple times on his channel and on his most popular videos to the flea market videos he opens up every single one with a personalized skit a personalized ad for a ball shaver and he's so obsessed he's he's so concerned about you shaving your balls in your privates and yeah this is a channel yeah like a lot of these youtube channels that you know kids watch and yeah you're gonna be like trying to sell sell kids a ball shaver telling them that you need a ball shaver to impress women and you're talking about oh you're not gonna be able to sell any games at the swap meet if you don't shave your junk because none of the, none of the merchants are gonna want to fuck with you and you know, you gotta clean your you gotta clean your D-pad, little Johnny. Here, just spend a hundred dollars on the shittiest razor on the market that has terrible reviews, that everyone says is a piece of junk and it's got it's cheap as hell. But yet you claim it's the finest quality, the finest craftsmanship available. Yeah, just lying out of his fucking ass. Like the dude looks like he has a gun to his head. Like during all of these videos, like he looks like fucking deranged. Like there's like te everything but tears coming out of his eyes. It's 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 so weird. It's so weird. Oh, uh, it's just very very strange. And then for number fifty, what did I? I don't even remember what I wrote down here. Oh yeah, <laughs> nobody would even know who the hell he is if he didn't latch onto the AVGN. Yep, I think that one speaks for itself. So, you know what, Pat and Ian, you are done. You have, <laughs> yes, you are cataloged. Remembered for all time as the frauds you are, thanks to Afro Gamer Dude. I don't know who I'm going to do next. I have two options. We could do a poll, I suppose. I haven't actually gotten to the nitty gritty of any of the next two, although the first two lists, the lists are drawn out. We could either do the museum, uh, the museum fraud himself, or we could uh, go with someone a little more happy, a little more uh, deranged, one might say. The very, very happy man who's very happy over console gaming. So let me know, I guess, in the comments. Also, leave your thoughts on the video, of course. But yeah, if anyone cares to also leave your votes on who you would like to see next. And uh, whichever one you pick, I should be able to push out within a week or two. So hopefully just a week, but we'll see. Thanks for tuning in.